Oh, the Internet of Things? Oh, simply it's just um, all the various technologies that we've been working on for the last 40 years have kind of come together. And so now uh, we can take what's happened with the Internet, where, where essentially all humans are now connected, and we can now connect everything as well. Internet of Things to me is like the idea that uh, any, any device that has an input or output in general, not, not saying the, the internet part already, but just any device that takes anything in or puts anything out should be able to report that and should be able to understand what it, what it does and what its impact is on the overall, overall network behind it. To me, it kind of just means connected objects. It's connected objects, smart cities, embedded sensors, uh, ubiquitous computing. I think all of those things make up the internet of things. I realize it's just kind of threw out a bunch of kind of hot words, uh, words, but like, but really, I think it's about um, creating objects that that talk. There's a lot of excitement around making new things, and we tend to, I think, kind of uh, almost fetishize some of the things we make to the point where we've created this term, the Internet of Things, when in fact it's not about the things. It's it, the Internet of Things is a dumb term because. What really matters is the relationships that those things enable. To maybe assume that there's enough intelligence in the objects around us to know things and to communicate things about us and to us. The Internet of Things could be, could be an environment that gets out of your way, I'm thinking. It's a political movement as well. Well, maybe not with us, but I foresee a political movement, definitely. I think this is far more productive than the Occupy movement, quite frankly, because if it is raising a sense of awareness about your environment and building in responsibility, that in a way is part of democracy, entirely part of democracy, and a much more targeted outcome for um, the problems that we have, the environmental problems we face, um, the collective environmental problems. I think, I think it's, it's not, you know, what we're talking about the Internet of Things, though, it's not just, not just the socialness, but I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a power shift. I think it's more of a power shift. thing I'm going to talk about is the Air Quality Egg. It's a collaboration I'm working on uh, with a, a large group of people, a really great uh, global uh, community. And I think that is actually what makes the Air Quality Egg really unique. I mean, the stationary environmental units, you're, you're going to see some later today. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's being done by a lot of people, right? It's very, really exciting how accessible these kind of tool sets are, have become. The Air Quality Egg, I think, is unique in that it is entirely community driven. It's at probably the most democratic project uh, I've ever participated in. And it's really exciting to see different communities um, in Amsterdam and in New York uh, working on it, on the fabrication, the development, the productization of it. What makes democratic is that every time there has been, you know, a meetup or a decision needing to be made, we have a Google group, we've got a wiki, these are all publicly accessible. Every time that there's an event or a meetup, all of that is publicly advertised and open all the time to anyone to just join in at any moment. In Amsterdam, a lot of people use bikes and are in the street all the time, so we, would, we were thinking about, like, what, let's do something with air quality. And we, we didn't know if, it was, if, it, if you could do something with air quality, but uh, we just wanted to give it a go. So here we are. I did the first prototype, and then New York built the second prototype. I've been involved working with Joseph Vedra and Ed Borden at Patch Bay in creating the air quality network, um, the air quality egg device that they've been, they've been playing with and hacking on here. Well, our strategy here, I think, is going to be like, super organized. Yeah. We're going to be like... Yeah. moving and people are going to like gravitate to it. Having the collaboration between between Amsterdam and New York and London is that uh, you sort of break away from your local culture and I think that's a, that's a, that's a good thing. I think this is a, this is a process, you know, and I think what's what's the, the important thing to understand is that like we're building this story together and um, and as the community expands the story will become clearer and today and tomorrow you know we're going to try and make some headway on like more of the more maybe the more technical things here but really these more these technical things are are second still secondary to the community so what do you think are you in are you in we got one yes daniel press this press this awesome 
Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Yes. I, I think what we're doing is is different in some ways, but the point is is that is that this is a community. So well, do you want it to be a, a, an open or a closed? It's community? actually open. an open community, right? That's why you need to like make people realize and change their behaviors, right? Like, so well, this so is the quite people in this community want to change their behavior. They want to they want to understand what's going on so that they can yeah. they can change behavior. A Kickstarter in two weeks. Kickstarter is a great way to expand the community. That's why we're doing it. It's not because of the money. We want to do it for the community. It's, uh, it's about sensors because uh, if you have a thing, it needs to communicate something. Code is very good. I, I, the code took a long time. If, if, we, if we're going to mass produce them, we want to, to be able to sell it for like 50 euros. And with a nice enclosure and, and, and uh, manual, yeah. and then uh, and some more features. The more sensors we can put in it, the better. But currently, the sensors are the limiting factor. How we, many do you have? Like one. This is uh, this one is two sensors, but we need we need at least two more because all the sensors are also humidity dependent and temperature dependent. We realize one you can go to the talks today and realize how much a challenge that is to do it yourself. That you know they they realize that. Well, building a really good sensor is going to cost you, you know, a lot of money, and that this ten thousand or fifty thousand or sixty thousand dollar sensor, you know, package is not totally unjustified in the amount of engineering that had to go behind it. But at the same time, we don't know the processes that happen. So the the, the political nature of the open source movement, I think, is a lot of ways is deconstructing this kind of very closed, closed door thing. The the kind of the distributed. The, Nature of it, I think it's it's totally relevant and totally parallel to that. It's 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 that kind of we'll, we'll take it into our own hands in a lot of way, and we become very much reliant on our own ability to improvise um, because we cannot assume that the world that we know today will be the same as tomorrow. For that, you need a skill to be creative and to be, and for that, you need curiosity. And for that, you need trust. What, what they don't have is an enclosure. <laughs> There's no enclosure. No I just, I, I mean, it's just, it's the, it's the nanode. A sheet. We need enclosures for our air quality egg, but the, the egg is not finished yet. The, yeah, the manufacturing of the egg is not done. The chicken is not ready. So we're going to simulate an egg with a flurry cup, which is the closest thing we can find in our minds to an egg shaped thing. There. Yeah. And what is the cup? Oh, you see, we need the white one over there. Yeah, the white. So we take two ice cream and then six of those cups for our science right project. Thank you. And thanks. I thought it was in the same building. No, no, it's not. Okay, unit zero one. Actually, it's a different building. It's listed as workshop. It's trying to just go to the end. We would like to go outside here and put six sensors up. The, the infrastructure that the data flows through between a device and another device or a device and another and a person is is really needs to be sort of transparent the the great part about using a platform like patch bay is that it's uniform so i can create something now that uploads data to patch bay and then i can create something that downloads data from patch bay and it can read anything i can all i have to do is basically program the the, the just a little bit of output from a device or program a little bit of input from a device and all the other stuff is handled and so in that sense that the 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 virtual network in a lot of ways is non-existent or is all, all present depending on how you want to look at it but you know it's really about the the thing and the end user then that's that's the the, the perfect place to be in, in a lot of ways is the, the stuff that happens in between doesn't need to you don't need to know about it you know that's the magic in a lot of ways like whatever it doesn't it, it gets there it comes from here goes to there in between there is magic let's make some make some magic all right all right, water stones. There's no window, though. I need to use just a power outlet, and I need to hang. No. Um, just for today. Probably not with that probably not. I'm afraid. OK, going over there. The computer fair. Uh, come on. Um, on, yeah, can I, can I just ask a favor? I need to just use this power. Can I use the power outlet behind there? I just want to put something over by the window. It's this uh, this thing. This shimmy. It's a, it's an air quality sensor. It's not gonna blow up, is it? No, it's it not gonna blow up. I swear. Up is that cool? I'm gonna go with it. I'm afraid though that if four hours of data is not really gonna be enough, but 
I could be wrong. Go and prototyping the sensors and soldering up the circuits and working on debugging everything. And it's getting information. Whether that information is pertinent, that, that's going to be the, the long haul of this. And I think that there's a lot of presentations today specifically about validating this data scientifically and validating it under research and then also validating it personally. And, and I think that the, the personal approach is going to be much more successful, I, I feel, right away than, than a research approach. Accurate government stuff, uh, well, from KCL, from yeah. King's College, and that's uh, 15 minutes. No, <laughs> that's what I do. So, just so. I mean, well, we we're doing every five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's what we're doing. Right. Good. Okay. And one of the issues I would have with it is um, how d how credible is it? Because we, we're always suspect about government data. There's not enough of it. It may have been massaged, whatever you know. So, so hence the idea. Let's go out and correct citizen data. But then you've got to. I think you've got to sell that citizen data to the citizens. Even if our data is not valid scientifically or in, in that technical direction, I'm hoping that we get the right information to say there needs to be more study. That, that, that air quality sensors like this really can be uh, the go-to for application of real high-end sensors. I mean, the, the government has picked in from places to put sensors, but what if we can say, well, there's real pockets here that you need to be careful of, or there, you know, right around the school, there's this traffic intersection that, you know, we have really weird readings, and we've changed our sensor out three times, and we're still getting really weird readings. You know, further investigation, and that's a that's a win right there. You know, whether or not the the data is great or not, I don't really care. One of the interesting things about the air quality egg will be, I think, uh, once it's uh, once. Uh, it's deployed and there's a, a, a fair amount of people using it. Then, so what, what will be interesting then is actually what will people do with that data. From an academia standpoint, it's nice to, ba to make, but it's much nicer to see it in the hands of thousands of people worldwide using it and seeing all the data streaming to the patch bay network, seeing lots of graphs all around the world. We are not organized yet, but there are many, many uh, separate projects all over the world where people are doing this. Uh, there are projects in New York, in Brazil, in, in California, in, in, in Italy, basically everywhere where people are concerned about their quality, their air quality.